Today we're going to show you how you can use the Cost Intelligence Dashboard to see cost and usage trends with your KPI dashboard to identify if there's any actual savings opportunities. We're going to focus on S3 storage. So we're going to first navigate to the S3 storage summary tab in your Cost Intelligence Dashboard. The first item that pops out to me is how over 80% of your storage is on standard and frequent access or SIA. It's great to see so much of your uh, so much of your storage using different storage classes beyond just the S3 standard, but with such a large percent on SIA, there could be an opportunity to take advantage of the new storage class that was announced at reInvent in 2021. It's called Glacier Instant Retrieval or GIA. GIA delivers up to a 68% cost savings over SIA, and it's great for data that is rarely accessed, typically no more than once a quarter or or even beyond once a quarter. And it's for that data that still requires millisecond retrieval that you get on SIA today. Since this is a new storage class, it may not be something that your teams are actively using today or know that it's an opportunity that fits for them. So it's a great opportunity to, to drill down and really show them how they can see these opportunities. Before we go to look at the actual opportunities, one thing I wanna point out is that you can see that the unit cost has been remaining constant. This is a good indicator to me that the teams have been using a similar lifecycle policy or similar process in place to use the various storage classes together. When we, ta when we see if there's any opportunity within the GIA storage class, you could actually see that this unit cost could potentially go down. We can also see down here that your S3 storage cost and usage are trending at a parallel rate, which is a good indicator that you know, you're just kind of following along at your same unit cost. Now that you're able to see kind of the opportunities and where your trends are, let's navigate over to the KPI dashboard to see if there's actually any actionable opportunities that you can take. On the KPI dashboard, we've nav navigated to the S3 summary or just your S3 sheet. This is where you'll be able to drill down to see down to the bucket level if this is an opportunity that your team should be looking into and what the potential savings could be. Before we look into potential uh, GIR optimization opportunities, I like to point out that there might be some low-hanging fruit. One of my favorite use cases to look at first is inactive S3 buckets. And by inactive, I mean S3 buckets that have no put object, get object, copy object, or put object for replication for longer than a, a certain duration of days. I typically say start at 60 days. And what this is a good indicator of is if there's an opportunity that potentially you could have used intelligent tiering. And if it was beyond 60 days, you could have saved an additional six, uh, an additional 30% by being able to leverage the standard and frequent access intelligent tiering tier. And if it was beyond 90 days, you could have potentially leveraged the standard, I mean, the archive instant access intelligent tiering tier which is an, an additional 68% savings over that SIA intelligent tiering tier. So a huge amount of savings for something that automatically does it for, for, for you. So intelligent tiering is a great place to look for these buckets that have had no active request. If you do know your data patterns though, you can look at putting a lifecycle policy in place or potentially uh, deleting the objects if they're no longer needed. For here, you can actually click in to see for these inactive buckets. So let's just say I wanna look at ones that were beyond 180 days old, but still within 364 days. You can actually see now here what these opportunities are by the bucket level, and you can actually change it so it groups down to your account level and see exactly what account these are coming from. So here the data is anonymized, but you know, this would be your data for your teams. And while I'm looking at it by account, you could actually drill down to a tag level as well. One of the things I like to point out here is that the savings, while they look small, a little over 3.3K a month, one cost to point out is the estimated cost since your last request. So for some of these buckets that haven't been accessed in over a year or even months, it's more than just that monthly cost. It compounds over time. So while it might only be $1,000 a month, if it hasn't been accessed for over two years, you're now pushing over $25,000. So that's one opportunity that I always like to check into just because it's something that is really easy for you to see and really easy to bring back to your teams to see if there's an opportunity there. Let's now scroll down to look at what the larger savings opportunity was that we are seeing based on the trend in the cost intelligence dashboard. That trend in the cost intelligence dashboard with all of your usage or majority of your usage in SIA shows that there really is a large potential. Sometimes it's not always a great fit. 
And so what the dashboard and the KPI dashboard does is it actually excludes any buckets where it'll be more expensive to run on GIR. That's because GIR well, has a 68% savings over SIA storage. It has higher costs for retrievals and requests. So this takes that into account and lets you get a little bit closer to an accurate estimate of what your potential savings could be if you move to it. And as you can see here, it's huge. There's an additional potential of 1.7 million in savings just by taking advantage of GIR. This would be something I definitely would wanna take back to my teams. And so how I would go about doing this is I would look at maybe the top five or 10 opportunities. Typically you'll see the ones with the largest opportunity will be at the top here. And you can actually export this out and give it to your teams. Or you can actually grant them access to your dashboard and they'll be able to come in here and drill down and see it themselves. A lot of times folks will need a little bit more information before they actually wanna take action though. So as you can see here, you can actually see if they have S3 analytics or S3 inventory enabled, which they can then use to drill down to get more information about the objects within these buckets. If they don't have those enabled, one of my favorite resources to look into is S3 Lens Free Metrics. It's enabled on every AWS account by default. So you can have each of your teams go to their storage lens dashboard and see if there's any additional information that might help them get better insights so that they can know if they take that opportunity. Let's assume that they did take this opportunity though. If you were to see, take this opportunity, one of the best things to now do is how can you actually show the impact of it? One of my favorite views is looking in the metric summary. In the metric summary piece, you're able to actually see how your unit cost has changed over time, but also what percentage of coverage has changed as well. So if you were to take action on this, you would be able to see for each of these accounts how your Glacier Instant Retrieval coverage has gone up and your SIA coverage has gone down by taking these actions. You can also look at it by usage here. So if you wanna look at a usage perspective instead of cost, it's up to your organization's preference, but just gives you the ability to see it and how your teams need to see it, but also be able to track and, and understand the impact of these opportunities. Tying it back to your cost intelligence dashboard, if you navigate back into this view that we were just looking at, the same way you would have seen that your unit cost went down in the uh, table, you can also vis you'd also be able to visually see it here and see it go down. Then you'd also be able to see down in your cost and usage trends that your cost was going down and your usage was going up. So this is a great way to present the savings opportunity to your leadership and to your teams across of, of all different sizes. Thanks for tuning in to seeing how you can use your different dashboards together to identify savings opportunities. If you're interested in following along on more of the different ways that you can use the cloud intelligence dashboards to gain additional insights, we, we recommend subscribing to our channel and we'll be sharing more. Feel free to comment or post if there's any ideas that you would like to see. Thanks.